Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to our next lesson in the modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to talk about something known as a union. And if you can believe it, we haven't talked about unions yet in this series, but there's going to be a few important reasons why we need to. One is that unions differ slightly in C++ and C in that you can actually have data members. So I want to show you an example of that in case you just weren't aware that this was a thing. And otherwise, I want to go ahead and show you a few just examples or some use cases of how to use unions in C++. They're frequently used in C, and often you'll find similar use cases in C++. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at unions so we understand them just a little bit better here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just start with some of the syntax here. Let's make sure our terminal is nice and big so we can see everything. And basically, to create a union, it's going to look similar to a struct or a class. So let's just call it union. That's the keyword. And I'm just going to give it some generic name here, like u, and a semicolon to terminate it. Now, this at this point creates the union. And now I can provide some member variables here, or some uh, fields, if you prefer that terminology. And let's just go ahead and create a few different fields here. Things like i, maybe s and maybe F for float here. All right, now what's going on at this point is sort of interesting with unions, and this is where they differ than struct. So I wanna go ahead and illustrate, and then I'll show you in the code what happens with a union. Now a union differs from a struct in an important way, in that it only holds or its size, and we're gonna check this with size of in a moment here, the largest type here. Okay, so that basically means our union here, so I'm gonna actually draw it out here, and I've just named it u here, is only going to be, or the size of here, size of, is going to be the maximum of i, s, and f. And I'm writing that in a little bit of a pseudocode here. But that's it. That's the total size that it's going to take here in bytes. Now, why might you want to do this? Well, the idea is that you can hold some data that might be important, but you don't want to take the space of everything. So I'll give you an example in a moment of an actual use case of this, albeit a C use case, but you'll see why this is useful. So let's go ahead and just play around with our union a little bit. So let's go ahead and create one here. So I'm going to go ahead and create it. Uh, U will be the name, not the greatest name here. And I'll just call it, uh, how about just lowercase or my union. And then we can access the different fields of our union at this time here. So I can set dot I equal to, let's say 50. And let's go ahead and print out that value here. So let's go ahead and print out my union.i and we'll go ahead and see what the value is here and let's go ahead and just compile this and this isn't a new uh, feature in any way but i'm still going to use c20 because that's generally just what i like to uh, use here in this series and our source file here okay so works as expected simple enough here now what's sort of interesting here is what if i go ahead and um, access my union.i and then what if I try to print off one of the other fields here? Maybe at S here. Let's go ahead and see what value we get here. And we still get 50. So that's pretty interesting because this short, which is again just a smaller integer, usually half the size, still prints out at 50. But you know we never set it here. And it's true in C++ we don't have default values, but maybe we just got lucky. And this is where things are sort of interesting. Uh, maybe 50 was just left over in memory here. So what if I try another value here, like 50,253, which still should be within the limit here. Or, oh, hmm, okay, this isn't within the limit of an integer. So maybe we got garbage this time. What if I go ahead and set it to uh, 2003? That's going to be arbitrary enough, right? Well, again, just to illustrate my point, this time it fits. Because again, well, we need to think about how big is an integer usually four bytes. How big is short? Usually two bytes. So again, this range or the number of sort of zeros that we can store in our unions uh, for the byte values or the actual binary here would be the largest of these types, which for an int, a short, or a float is probably going to be four bytes. And in fact, we can actually verify this. So let's go ahead and just print this out here. The size of uh, my union and let's just go ahead and 
print out the size of each of our types as well here, just to see that we have the maximum here. So size of int, size of the short, and our size of the float. Okay, so here's our code. I'll make it just a little bit uh, smaller here so you can see everything on one screen just for a moment here. And let's go ahead and compile this, run it. And again, you can see four is the size of int, two is the size of a short, and four is the size of a float. Thus, the largest size here, which stores any of these possible types would be four bytes for either our float or our integer type here. And again, we can kind of see how this works here. Let's go ahead and just take away the float and the integer here. So I need to make sure that I don't uh, use it in any way here. And let's go ahead and check what our union size is now. And our union size here is now just two bytes here. Again, just being big enough for the largest type here. Okay, so I'll go ahead and undo these uh, changes here. Now, one thing that you've probably not seen if you're familiar with unions in C, for instance, is that you can still have uh, member functions as part of your class here. So I could write a function here called like print i or something. And we could go ahead and uh, do a cout here for i, and we could call this function. Then maybe we want a version for prints, printf, or just printing out some piece of the data here. So that would be a possibility here. So let's just go ahead and uh, demonstrate that here. And I'll go ahead and copy this line here, and go ahead and show you that we can call my union print i. And the same rules apply, or many of the uh, same rules uh, do apply here. Oops, looks like I made a little bit of a mistake here uh, because we're calling void here. Just need to call uh, print i. There we are. Uh, regarding, um, we can have uh, constructors and destructors and these sorts of things with our unions. So we get this uh, same object oriented features as we have for structs and classes. But there are actually a few limitations and I'll go ahead and bring those in here uh, from our favorite website, CPP Reference here, specifying some of the different things we can have, right? Again, member functions, same object-oriented features, uh, keeping our code and data together, uh, but we can't have base classes, can't use it as a base class, um, can't have uh, non-static data members or reference types. Again, some of these things sort of intuitively make sense since the uh, way that we're accessing or using a union is based off of a different types. So things could get a little bit messy um, in this way. Okay, so now that we have a little bit of an idea of what a union is and this idea that it can take on different data types, let's actually take this code and let's just try to see some intuition of how it works here. And the first thing that I want to do to show you this is um, I'm going to simplify our union just a little bit. Let's go ahead and get rid of this member function here. I'll make this a little bit bigger here. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the float for now. And uh, I'll get rid of this and just kind of clean things up here. So let's just keep it really simple. Again, when we're trying to just understand things, I just want to keep them uh, simple here. So what I'm going to do is just print out my program here, copy it, and then I'm going to take it to one of our favorite tools, or one of my favorite tools, um, I should say. And that is the Godbolt tool or Compiler Explorer. So let me go ahead and just paste this in uh, and make things just a little bit bigger here. Now, again, intuitively, what I want to show you uh, how unions work in this idea of that it's really just a collection of bytes in a structure that's, you know, as big as it needs to be, is to focus in on this myunion.i here, and then myunion.s here, and then we'll set it to, you know, whatever value we want, say 16 or something like that. And then let's go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger here so we can see what's going on in the assembly. Now, if you can't read assembly, that's fine. In the future, I'll have some more assembly lessons. Uh, but really, all that's important for you to do is kind of highlight over each of these instances here and see where they change on the uh, panel right above me. You'll see the lines being highlighted here. Uh, one right here and then one just a little bit lower here is to see that they're using the same offset from this base pointer, basically the way that we're accessing into a um, some piece of data here. It's the same offset, but we are treating the data differently. And again, if you don't uh, or if you haven't done assembly for a while, you'll notice that these instructions are slightly different. Move L and move W for how we're moving data around. Now, let me give you something that's a little bit more 
easy to recognize like a number like two or four because they'll be the same um, in hex or the representation just so you can again more closely align or see these values here we're moving some data here from some location um, here our source into some memory address and then our source into some memory address and again notice that these are the same even though uh, this uh, union again has two different uh, fields here this i and this s it's the same collection now watch as i go ahead and change this keyword here to struct here and then we'll do the same sort of experiment here and you'll notice that the offsets or the destinations on the right side here and i'm going to highlight them right here and right here are at different addresses again 10 uh, or rather uh, this is in hex here so 16 uh, and then uh, c in hex so this would be uh, 12. So again, these are just different destinations where I'm storing things. So that's the difference again with a struct. And then if I actually do the size of this struct here, so let's just go ahead and quickly do uh, size of, you know, I've still called it uh, U here. That's okay. Uh, and we'll go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger here and make sure to include our uh, IO library here, IO stream, and just give our Godbolt tool a moment here. We can see that it's eight here. And again, just gonna, so that's with the struct. And when I change it from union, it's gonna take on the bigger of these two here and just give us four for this value here. Again, might be a little bit hard to see um, on your uh, screens here. So I'll just zoom in just a little bit there. There it is at the bottom of the screen here, four. Okay, so again, that's the idea. Now, again, the point of this, or why would you wanna use unions or bother with them? Why not just use a struct? Well, this often is very useful if you wanna pass different types of data around. And let me give you an example of some data here using the simple direct media layer. So many of you folks might've seen this uh, playlist, or if you're into gaming and graphics have used SDL, the simple direct media layer. But here's an actual example of a union that they have here and it handles different events so maybe you want your actual system to be able to pass events around like the user did some action well depending on what that action is we might want to treat it differently so was it a mouse click a joystick click did you um you know move the screen did you exit these are all just generically events and it's a nice way to sort of organize everything together so you wouldn't want to create all these different structures and have to handle all these different cases you would just want to treat an event well as it is in a sense so here's the different types of events here and then if you actually look at the source code since this is a uh, open source project you'll see the union here now this is a c-based project so you're going to see they use the type def here um, and then uh, define this as a uh, union here, which we don't need to do in C++. But again, you'll see all the different types of event types that can happen. And again, we're not storing all of this data because, well, this would be a lot to pass around in just one structure, right? If this was a struct, we would need to hold a window event, a keyboard event, text editing, text input, et cetera, et cetera, all of these fields. This would be many, 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 many uh, bytes versus just one uh, sort of union that could hold everything together. So that's the idea and sort of a motivation or maybe a good use case of unions to compact the data uh, together. So folks, I hope this was a useful lesson. I hope you learned a little about unions if you haven't seen them. Again, they're slightly different in C++ than in C because we can have uh, member functions, for instance, but I think they're really super useful to use and when they're used properly, can really be a nice optimization as far as how much uh, memory you're actually accessing. Now, in a later lesson, we're gonna actually look at something else known as a variant, which is sort of something known as a tag union. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that particular lesson as we continue on here. I hope you enjoyed this. If you learned something new, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't learn anything, well, leave a comment and let me know what I can produce later on. All right, folks, thanks for your time and hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time.